I want to welcome everybody who is out here today for Design Your Ultimate Life. And my name is Dan Gentry, and I will be your host on this fun time here. Now, I do ask that you just kind of disconnect for a minute. All right. I know that there are a lot of things that are pulling on our attention, and I just really I want you to take the next, you know, 30, 45 minutes or so and really take that time for yourself. Give yourself the, the gift of actually spending time on you. All right. So really what I'm here for is I want to tell you how you can get more time with your family and really build a sustainable, balanced lifestyle you know, without burning out, having to give up on your financial success or anything like that. Plus, I love giving, getting the opportunity to share a picture of my beautiful daughter. All right. So, you know, if you feel like you've ever failed at trying to, to design your life, you know, it's okay. You know, it's not, it's not your fault. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, and if you feel like you've, you've failed in that, don't worry. That's, that's why I'm here. I'm going to help you kind of come up with how, how to create that in your life. So my goal is I really want to help people who want to have, you know, the successful career, the thriving life, the, the, the true success. And yet, that they don't want to lose the connection with the, with their significant other. They don't want to miss out on time with with their children and with, and with the people that are really important to them. Okay, and really, the, the only way for you to truly have that you know happy you know ultimate life is by designing it, right? That's that's truly the the way to have it. And the way that we can do that is through creating a new you revolution. All right, but I, I wanted to kind of give you a few minutes about. You know, who am I? Who is this guy that's talking to you? Um, well, you know, my name's Dan Gentry. I, I am, I'm a farm boy from Dunellen, Florida. I grew up on a farm and had a fantastic, you know, childhood there. You know, it was, didn't always have everything, but I, I learned a lot of great lessons growing up on the farm. I did um, decide to join the Air Force and get out and see the world. Uh, they sent me to Omaha, Nebraska, which was not the part of the world that I was excited to go see, but I've found that you can be miserable or, or happy anywhere. Let, let me tell you that the, the difference in winters between Florida and Nebraska is dramatic, to say the least. Um, well, now you know, I speak to people around the world about peak performance while you know maintaining life balance, and you know, and I'm I'm super busy. I, I have five kids, and uh, you know, very active, and yet I, I don't, you know, I don't go crazy. <laughs> you know, it's uh, you know, I have that that ultimate life that for me is is fantastic. But it wasn't always that way. You know, and, you know, people will often ask me, you know, what is a, a life that's not in balance really, really look like? What are, what are the downsides of that? Well, you know, many years ago, um, my life was not the, the, <laughs> the pleasant thing that it is now. You know, I, I, I remember, you know, my, my life was kind of shattered. I, I still remember very vividly, you know, sitting on the edge of my bed. Uh, okay, well, bed's a bit... Uh, a bit generous. It was a mattress sitting on the floor in, in an empty one bedroom apartment. And I, I was sitting there just I had my head in my hands just going, <sighs> you know, I, I yeah, my life had kind of fallen apart. Um, you know, I was going to have to go the next day and take everything that was in savings and in 401ks and liquidate that so that I could survive. You know, my, my marriage was gone. My job was gone. My just, Everything important was, was kind, of, kind of gone. And I remember thinking, how did I get here? You know, what happened? Why did, why did this happen to me? Right? Well, it all started with the, the young executive. Uh, me when I had hair. Fantastic. Um, now, I was, after I left the Air Force, I went into the, the corporate world and, and I was really doing well for myself. You know, I was climbing the corporate ladder and, you know, trying to be that what society tells us we need to be as successful. Now, um, for those of you old enough to remember, um, this was right when Blackberries had just come out. Um, and before that, 24-hour email was not really 
easy. I mean, you had to open your laptop, you had to log in, all of this. Well, now you could have email right there on your hip. And man, did I. You know, I was climbing that corporate ladder and trying to, to you know, live that, that, that what I saw as the corporate life, you know, that, that, you know, to be a corporate executive, you need to be on all the time. And basically I was, I was on call 24 hours a day for years because my boss would send me an email at three in the morning and I'd reply back at three Oh five. Right. It was just, it was always, always on. And I remember um, one time going out to Denver, Colorado, where our corporate headquarters was. Hmm. Excuse me. And it was on the 11th floor and I wasn't there enough to have my own office. So they set me up with this other VP's office, little desk like this in front of the windows and, you know, checking the three to 400 emails that would come in that weren't worth waking up at four in the morning for. And uh, I remember I was going away, you know, typing away, working on all these different problems. And I'm like, yeah, I need coffee. So I, I left the room to go get a cup of coffee. And this was back when, you know, before Kerrig was really a thing. So having the individual coffees was really cool, smelled fantastic. Um, anyway, so I, I walked back into the room and I kind of stopped. Because the view from the room was like that. It was, I don't know if you've ever been to Denver, seen snow-capped Rocky Mountains, crystal clear blue sky, I mean, just, it was fantastic, and I hadn't seen it. I was so wrapped up in my little computer and on my emails that I had missed this glorious vista that was there. It's like, you know, this giant picture of God's beauty on earth, and I hadn't seen it because I was looking at this little man-made box of problems, All right? <coughs> Excuse me. And just, I remember it hit me viscerally. I, you know, like, oh my God, what am I doing? You know, something's wrong here. And I remember I sat back and I drank that cup of coffee and I really started looking at my life and I realized that, you know what? <laughs> my life's a mess. You know, yes, I'm doing really well financially. You know, my, my, I was, people knew who I were in the company. I was a big wig. I was the director of internet technologies, right? And yet my marriage was falling apart. I would leave before my daughter woke up and get home maybe in time to put her to bed. You know, I hadn't called my mom in months. My spiritual life was non-existent. My physical body was going, going to hell in a handbasket to, you know, be completely honest. Um, all of the important parts of my life were falling apart, but I was making really good money. Yay. And <laughs> I realized that, that something was wrong and I needed to fix it. Right. I, I had to, to find a way to create some balance, to create a way that I could have the financial success that I had, but I didn't have the rest of success. So I had to figure out a way to, to, to do that. And, you know, like most things, you know, I need to fix it. Yeah, it's something I need to do. I'll get around to it. And you know, I started looking for how do I do that. Unfortunately, I ran out of time. And in a three-month period from the end of 2001 to end of 2002, um, doors, I, you know, I had not put time and energy and effort into my marriage. And, you know, it, people say marriage is 50-50. No, it's not. Marriage is 100-100. Divorce is 50-50-ish. Um, <laughs> so, you know, because, you know, there were lots of reasons for the divorce, but I can really trace it back to not having spent time and energy putting into it. And, you know, and it was one of those divorces. When I was looking for graphics to, you know, show divorce and, you know, there were these like different, different hearts broken and all that. I saw this one. I'm like, yeah, that's it. It was jagged, you know, because there are some divorces that, you know, it's like a nice, somebody, a surgeon went in with a scalpel and separated two people. And then there are the divorces that look like a raptor attack. Well, you can figure out what kind my was. <laughs> so anyway, so that was one. That was, you know, at the end of November. And then in January, I was laid off. I wasn't <clears throat> important anymore. Um, so went from making very good money to zero money in a, you know, in a day. And um, yeah, that was fun. 
Uh, and then just to, just to cap it off, my father passed away in February. So in three months, I had the, you know, the loss of, you know, the divorce, laid off, and loss of a parent all at the same time. Well, needless to say, I was, um, I was in, a, in an interesting spot <laughs> mentally. Um, and it really, it really made me start thinking, you know, what is life all about? Right. You know, when, when you have these major events that happen, you really start evaluating your life. And for me, I, I went back to the epiphany that I'd had that there needed to be some balance. I needed to be able to have success and fulfillment at the same time. And so I went looking for that pattern because there, there had to be a pattern. I mean, I'm a software developer by trade, right? You take complex business problems, break them down into patterns and build a system around it. That's what software is. There had to be a way to do that for the human condition as well. So I went searching for that. And, you know, I was looking at inhuman dynamics. Okay. You know, if you want to get life balance, you've got yourself, you've got your relationships, you've got your stuff. So that's, you know, the foundation is you, your relationships, your stuff. And then even in for looking at yourself, you know, if you want to master yourself, it's your, you know, it's mind, body, spirit, right? Well, spirit's kind of that foundation of ourselves. The mind is the, our mental framework and then our body, right? It's the manifestation of ourselves. And, you know, I've remembered in a lot of the self-improvement books and tapes and you know, <laughs> tapes, isn't that funny? I'm old. Um, and audios uh, <laughs> that are out there, you know, they talk about be, do, have. You know, if you want to have certain things, you have to do things to get it. But really to do it, you need to be the right kind of person before you can do it and then before you can have it. And I remember actually one day, not I wasn't really paying attention in church, and um, my mind was kind of wandering. And I realized that even in Christianity, you have the same kind of kind of thing. Uh, you've got the foundation is you know the Father. You've got the Holy Spirit is kind of the framework, the way that that God moves through, you know, interacts in the world. And then you had the sun, which was the manifestation. I'm like, it's that same pattern again. It's the, the foundation, the framework and the manifestation. And then, you know, I'm, I'm a huge science and math geek. Uh, I will warn you ahead of time. Um, but Tesla, Nikola Tesla has this great quote that if you want to understand the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And it, it kind of, it was that eureka moment. Holy cow. That's my pattern. And that's why I call my atomic triad. And this is what I use throughout my, you know, my different programs. And my, this is a kind of a foundational piece here that everything has a foundation. Everything has a framework and everything has a manifestation. And using that, I came up with my pattern for having an, a fantastic life. And that's my life triad, which is what some of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about today is, is based on, on these things. The foundation of having an amazing life is life balance. The framework is our life map, our goals. What, how, how are, where are we going? How are we getting there? And then the life legacy is, what's our purpose? Why are we here? You know, what's our purpose in life? What's gonna, what are we going towards? Where's our life, life map leading? Why are we doing it? And so that's, that's my pattern and that's what I'm wanting to, to share with the world. And, yeah, and I, I have to touch on this because this is one of my personal missions is there's a song uh, called Cats in the Cradle. If you're not familiar with it, do a quick search on YouTube, uh, lots and lots of versions of it. But it's essentially a song about, you know, a man who has a child and because he's working so much, never has time with that child until, you know, the man himself retires and wants to spend time with his son, but now his son is busy because he grew up just like his dad. And, and it, it's a beautiful, sad <laughs> song about the, the cycles that we continue. And my personal mission is I want to make that song just a song and not a story about anybody because I've been on both sides of it. I've been the kid wishing my dad were there more and I've been much to my chagrin. I was the dad 
that was away working and not spending time with the kids. So this is my personal mission. If you get nothing out of today, listen to the song. Don't make sure it doesn't happen in your life. All right. So, so three secrets. What are we going to talk about today? All right. The secret number one is that New Year's resolutions are lies that we tell ourselves. And how do we start telling ourselves the truth? Secret number two is that your life legacy is the key to overcome willpower failing you. Because we all know it does. And secret number three is how to keep ripples from stealing your goals and dreams. So let's dive in, shall we? So secret number one, New Year's resolutions and actually any should-based goals are lies that we tell ourselves. You know, and, and really, if you think about it, New Year's resolutions are just that. Yeah, I should lose some weight. Yeah, I should make some more money. Yeah, I should fill in the blank. And we know we're not going to do it, right? I mean, well, okay. We, we, yeah, we know we're not going to do it. It's, it's just something, yeah, that'd be really nice. That'd be nice if we could do that. So now you may be thinking, you know, I don't lie to myself. I actually set decent goals. I spend some time on it every year and really, you know, put time into it. Oh, yeah, I, I get that. Um, but the reality of it is that um, we all can do that, right? And I, I can't tell you how many times that I have had New Year's resolutions that, you know, I, I remember finding a goal book and, you know, when I was writing down my New Year's resolutions, I pulled out my journal, started writing it in there. And I looked back at a previous journal from like four or five years earlier. And there were like 75% of the goals were the same. You know, I want to lose weight. <laughs> I want to write a book. That was, that was a big one for me. I, I want to write a book right? I've got this book inside me. I need to get it out. And, you know, but I, you know, I would, I would always make those resolutions and I would, I would set those goals down because I really wanted to accomplish them. I really wanted it. I wanted the hope that this year would be the year, right? How many times have we said, this is the year, right? Well, the, the, I realized that um, I was lying to myself. I would write it down. I would say, okay, I'm going to have so much done by Jan you know, by February and so much done by July. And the reality was I, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't really have a plan that I believed in. Uh, I was just, I was going through the motions of what goal setting was supposed to be. Right. I didn't, it was, but it was just a resolution. It was just a, I should. It wasn't an, I must. And that's when I realized that I needed to move it from, I should to, I must. I needed to create a revolution, not a resolution. A resolution's weak. Resolution's not gonna get you anywhere. You need a revolution. You need to be willing to make the sacrifice <laughs> That's what revolutions do. You've got to be willing to make that sacrifice, right? The, the founding fathers of, of, of the United States didn't say, yeah, you know, we should have a new, our own country. No, we're going to put ourselves on the line and have a revolution. And that's what you have to do with yourself, right? You have to create your personal revolution. And that's what I did for me, right? I, I <laughs> So, all right, now let's, let's have a plan. Let's really do this right. And, you know, and there were, there were definitely obstacles in the way of doing that. But because I had changed it from an I should to an I must, those obstacles didn't, didn't stop me, right? And, you know, I'm happy to say today that I've actually written a couple of books, right? And, and because I've taken that concept of a personal revolution, a personal change, I, I, I made, moved it to I must, it happened. And, you know, I, I know, you know, so many people that I talk about this, you know, well, you know, I can just, I can create 
you know, my a list of dreams and goals. And, you know, I, I just need to try harder, right? You know, 2019 really is going to be the year. Well, you know, I, I'm here to tell you that just setting the goals isn't enough. You know, a, a, a resolution, a list, it's, it's not enough. Trying harder is not the answer. You need the revolution. And that's, you, you just, you've got to get it to must. And that's what I, you know, like sharing with my, you know, with my clients is, is how do we get it to must? How, you know, you need to find, how do you take that and make it where it has to happen? And when you get to has to happen, that's when it becomes a revolution. So no more resolutions. Make it a revolution. All right. Secret number two. Your life legacy is the key to overcoming willpower or willpower failing you. So how many of us have said, eh, I'm just not able to maintain willpower. You know, I try, but it just, it, you know, I'm, I'm good for a little while and then bleh, it just kind of falls off, right? We're, we're good for a day, a week, sometimes even a month, but then this kind of fades, right? Well, we have to change it from it's just willpower to becoming who we are. A perfect example of that. My grandmother had a goal that her grandchildren, and especially me, would not start smoking. That was, that was kind of the, the big thing. Didn't, didn't want anybody to, you know, any, any of the grandkids to smoke. Now, here's a problem, okay? Because everybody else in the family smoked. My grandfather smoked. My mom smoked. My stepfather smoked. My aunts and uncles smoked. I mean, it was like everybody smoked. And... <laughs> It's like, how do you, how do you not do that, right? How can you achieve that, that goal? Well, she made it part of who I am, not just, you know, this is something you shouldn't do, right? It was, it actually became part of my identity. And I remember, because you know, I grew up on a farm with my grandparents, all right? You know, my grandmother was almost like my, my mother in, in a lot of ways. And yeah, she got very clear on that thing that, okay, you're not going to smoke. And she was amazing in how she did that, okay? There, there were a couple of things that she did that I, I still am, am, am in awe about because it was such brilliant psychological engineering. Um, the first was that um, she made all the kids, all the grandkids, when it was like river cleanup day, my, my grandparents bought a, a place on the Rainbow River here. And all of the grandkids, especially the ones that she didn't want to, didn't want to smoke, our job on cleanup day was to go around and pick up all the cigarette butts. That was our job, going around to clean up all the ones that were on the ground. And there were tons, right? <laughs> and it just... You know, it was like, oh, I never want to do this. And the other cool, really interesting thing that she did was that she would tell us stories, right? And she, we had this design that one day we were all going to just run away and go out and build a tree house on the lot on the Rainbow River. Now, if you had to get down to, to go to the river and go swimming and that sort of thing, you had to walk down the one path that went down there. Well, there was a tree that leaned over that path, right? And we were going to build a tree house in that tree. And any smokers that came by, we were going to pour cold ice water on their heads and put out their cigarettes. That was our plan, master plan, right? <laughs> Which as an adult, it's pretty ridiculous. But as a you know, six, seven-year-old kid, it was awesome, right? And it ingrained that identity that purpose, that legacy for me that I will never be a smoker. I will never do that. I will never be that person that's going to get ice water spilled on their head, right? <laughs> it's just not, that's not who I am. And that became my identity and my, and that legacy lived on because 
I'm not the kind of person that smokes. That's just not who I am. That's not what my legacy will be. That's not the legacy I'm leaving to my kids. And, and the, the reason I say this is that, you know, so many times we've got these things that, that we want to do, but, but they're not grounded in who we are, right? That's where it's that be. <laughs> Before you do, can do and have, you've got to be. So you need to be your legacy. You need to, to, it needs to be part of your identity. So you have to, to, to be your legacy. And for so many of us, that, that's really hard is to, to find what is our legacy. And that's, you know, it's something that I spend a lot of time with my coaching clients is finding that out. But if you take the time and figure out who am I really and what does that person do, right? That willpower is not, doesn't even come in a factor anymore. I mean, because trust me, when I was in college and in, in the military and <laughs> all through my life, I had plenty of opportunity, plenty of pressure to, to start smoking, you know to, you know, to be cool, right? But it was not ever who I was. And in our today's world, you know, if you can get that level of identity of, around your legacy for who you are as a, as a father, who you are as a, a spouse, who, you know, who you are as a business owner, right? That becomes your guiding point. And, you know, and you, you know, you don't ever have to worry about burning out. Um, you know, burnout is one of the big, big things that, that I, I talk to people about and, and I'm saying, you know, don't burn out, right? <laughs> burnout is, is it comes from being in stress, right? And, and you know, here's, here's some signs of burnout. You, you probably felt several of these throughout your life, right? <clears throat> me. Difficulty concentrating, anxiety, depression. I mean, all of these things, if you look at all of them, there's a, for me, there's a connection with not being connected to who we are and who our legacy is. You know, we're, we're burning the wrong kind of fuel, right? We're, we're trying, we're, we're doing out of desperation. We're doing it out of, you know, I, I should do this. I need to do this, right? And not from, I get to do this. And that's why, don't burn out. You make your legacy your fuel. I mean, what I'm doing right now, <laughs> this, this, I'm so juiced right now because this is my legacy. It's helping people not burn out, helping people get past the concept of, you know, working and not having any time for their family. It's getting, making the song cats in the cradle, not real for anybody. That is my fuel. That's what, what, what gets me going and why, uh, why I get so excited about what's going on here. And this doesn't stress me out. I mean, you know, I don't have burnout because of what I'm doing here, right? This is, I get excited that I get to do this. It's not that I have to do this. I get to do this. And that comes from being in alignment with your legacy and with your purpose. You get to go to work. You get to have time with your family. Not, okay, it's Monday, I gotta go. No, Mondays are exciting. I get to make things happen. All right. Enough on that. I, I, get, I get real fired up about that one. All right. So secret number three, how to keep ripples from stealing your dreams and go goals and dreams. And you're probably thinking, what? what the heck are you talking about with ripples? <coughs> water break. Take your, drink, take your drink of water, everybody. It's my turn, too. All right. Ripples. Years ago, um, 2002 to be exact, uh, when I was dealing with my the, the divorce that um, I talked about earlier, I was going through some marriage counseling. And the marriage counselor told me something really interesting. And she said that marriages are systems. Much like a baby mobile, 
that you see here. If you go and change one thing, right, which happens, you know, in, in my case, it was my marriage. I had kind of made some changes in the way that I was acting. Well, she says, it sets everything in motion. You know, you, you touch, you, you hit one of these items on a baby mobile and all of the others are going to start moving, right? That's what happens when we decide to change, right? You know, because I had always had different goals and things that I wanted to do. Um, the, the easiest one that comes to mind is changing my diet. I wanted to eat healthier, right? I want to be healthier. Well, that's, fan that's, that's a wonderful goal. It's fantastic and relatively easy to do if it were just you. The problem is, like throwing a stone in a pond, that action of saying, okay, I want to change my diet, now ripples out into the, into the universe, right? So for me, if I change my diet, I'm not the only one at home. I have my, my wife and two kids. So how is that going to affect meal planning? Okay. How is that going to affect the snacks that are in the office? How does that affect me, that trip to the vending machine? How does that affect going out to lunch with friends? How does that affect going out to eat? Do you go out to eat? How does that affect grocery shopping? How does that affect, you know, vacation time? How, on and on and on. There are all of these ripple effects from making any decision. And that's a simple one. <laughs> that's, I want to eat healthier, right? That should be, that's like su you know, super low on the goal bar, right? And yet, here are all of these ripples that, for me personally, have caused me to, okay, you know, I'll just go back to, the, to what I was doing. Because as, as humans, we have our patterns and to change those patterns requires some effort. And if we're getting extra resistance, we don't want to change. We'll just go back to the way things work. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. So, you know, we have to have a plan. We need to have a plan for the, the aftershocks, right? Um, and you know, that's what, what I did for myself was, was coming up with how do I deal with this? How do I create my plan? And in creating my life map process, I actually have my system for, for de dealing with that. But it's finding all of the different areas that are going to be affected by the goal that you have, right? So that's what, that's what it's really all about, is finding all of those ripples. So now, you know, because I, I fought through it, now I actually have, you know, a system for that. And it's something that, you know, that I teach to people. Uh, you know, I've helped uh, a local chiropractor, you know, get focused on <laughs> what she really needs to do, be able to, to make the decisions and focus in a positive direction, right? And it's, it's not, that's been one of the big things that, that she and I have worked on is how to deal with, with the ripples and how to deal with the effects of all of those decisions, right? So, you know, so you got to say, you know, well, how do we do that? How do we set goals properly? How do we see all the potential ripples? And it's really, it's about looking at all of the different people, all of the different systems that are around you. You know, it's really take in, you know, who are the people that are going to be affected by this? What does this decision mean I can and cannot do? And what are the effects of that? So it's, it's really taking time to not just, you know, set the goal and, you know, okay, here's the goal. Here are all the things I need to do to, to achieve it. But it's going deeper into what does that mean for everybody else and everything else in my life? And that's, that is how you do it. And that's how you really take into account the ripples. All right. So let me ask you a question. Uh, have, have you been enjoying the, uh, the webinar so far? Yes. So, you know, we've covered, you know, our, kind of our secret number one, how New Year's resolutions are lies and how to start telling yourself the truth. 
We've talked a lot about life legacy and how that's the key to, to overcome willpower failing you. And we've even talked about keeping the ripples from, from stealing your dreams and goals. Okay. So the question I want to ask is who wants to take things to the next level? All right. You put in the, the question and answer box. I'm ready. If you are ready to hear, take things to the next level. Because otherwise, I mean, I can just, I can just stop here. But uh, if you want to be able to, to take it to that next level, say, I'm ready. Anyone out there? All right. All right. Excellent. Me too. All right. So what I want to share with you today, and, and this is something that is a, a labor of love for me, is uh, my new You Revolution online program, right? And this is really, um, it's for helping people who want to have that successful career and a thriving life, but they still want to keep that connection with their spouse, with their children, with everybody that's important. That's really what this is all about, okay? And what you're going to get with this is that my New You Revolution online seminars, it's actually two live sessions, at least four hours um, with me, you know, it, depending on how many questions and where people go, it's going to be an interactive kind of session. It could go, it could potentially be longer, but this is going to be a real seminar just online. Okay. And there are going to be two sessions with me, one uh, on the 27th of December and one on the 2nd of January. All right. Uh, so this is real getting down into it, really building, finding out what's that purpose, finding out that legacy, right? It's building your map diving in deep, finding out where those ripples are, right? And really taking the time to do, do it properly. And you're also going to get members area access, which is going to give you all of the recordings from the two sessions, as well as access to many other tools that, that we have uh, with Third Power Performance. Also, there's going to be a you know, a secret Facebook group specifically for New You Revolution that will, you know, so it's going to be, you're going to be able to go there, connect with your peers, with other people that are going through this process, other people that have the same kind of thought process and are really wanting to, to, to move their lives forward, you know, kind of be with that like-minded, like-minded group. So really th this program is for, all, you know, it's for everybody, it's for, for business owners who really want to expand their business, but still have that family and, and lifetime. Uh, also for corporate professionals who are trying to stay productive and, and not burn themselves out, right? Um, it's even for network marketers that are looking to move themselves to the next level or stay at home parents trying to balance taking care of their self, care of themselves, family, and all of the, other, I remember when my wife broke her leg and I was having to do, you know, both my work stuff and all of the, the home stuff too. And oh my goodness, <laughs> you know, people ask me, does your wife work? I'm like, oh yeah, just the pay is not that great. Or you could be, you know, somebody who's the single parent who's having to do what I had to do for a couple of months all the time. And they're going, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm crying for you, really. Um, <laughs> but this is for everybody who, who wants their life to be better. So the primary reasons why people don't get started is either I don't have the time, right? And if you don't, make, if you don't have the time, you're never going to have the time. So you can, you can make it. Um, and even if you can't make the seminar times, right? It, you know, hey, I'm, I'm working on December 27th and January 2nd, or what have you. They're recorded, they're part of the members program, and you can listen to them over and over and over again. So time is not really, not really a factor. And even if you've failed at programs before, uh, I can't tell you how many times I went through different programs, you know, Anthony Robbins and um, uh, a whole bunch of other <laughs> <laughs> the names escape me at the moment. Um, but I've gone through all of these different programs many times. And there have been times when they, I didn't do anything with them and times where they really, it really hit. So the thing is, this is the time for you. And I'm going to be here. I'm going to be in your corner. I'm going to be making sure that you are achieving what you really want to achieve. That's my 
personal, it's my mission, right? You know, I'm not here just to make money, right? Uh, the money's not important. I mean, I, I take it, don't get me wrong, but I'm about transforming people's lives. I want to make the world a better place, one person, one heart at a time. That's why I'm here. So even if you've, you've tried before, now's the time. So this New Year Revolution online program, normally this is about a $1,000 program uh, in, in, all, in all reality, okay? You know, because you know, uh, personal coaching with me is, is, not, is not cheap. And you're getting you know, eight to 10 hours of time with me where you can actually ask questions. So that's, that's pretty cool. So what else do you need? Uh, you know what? You need some tools, some tools to make this happen. And I am opening up for the first time for this group, my life triad toolbox. Okay. These are worksheets and planners and um, brainstorming and legacy building and daily success worksheet. I mean, we're talking just years and years and years of my life of me working with my clients and you know, and myself, you know, it's like, you know, I need a way to figure out what I'm doing in, in a day, you know, day. I feel like I'm wasting a lot of time. Okay. Well, there's a time tracking worksheet for that. So I can every 15 minutes, what am I doing? Right. There's, you know, well, my schedule overall, where, where can I fit in some exercise time? Where can I fit in this? Or, you know, I was working with a, a client This I just, I feel overwhelmed. I've got so many different volunteer things that I'm doing, I feel like I don't have any time for myself. So we created <laughs> together a tool to be able to map out all of her time and, and now I'm sharing that with you. So really, these tools, you're going to be able to find out where your time is going, be able to map out your schedule, actually see how your emotions are affecting your day, right? <clears throat> that was one that I, I felt like I was being a negative too much. So I actually created a tool to be able to kind of map out throughout the day, track, how am I feeling? How am I doing? Am, am I excited? Am I in, in, in positive emotions or am I in negative emotions? And then is there a time of day that that's kind of consistent? You know, you know what? Every day at, at one o'clock, I'm, I'm upset or well, why is that? And it allowed me to find those patterns that were affecting my day. Um, and I mean, I even have a menu planner thrown in here, okay? Something that I use in my family to a, a lot. Um, helps make the, the family meetings a lot more fun. So with these, you're, you're not gonna be able to have excuses about not having time. Uh, you're gonna be able to identify what's draining your energy. You're gonna be able to really dig deep into, into your goals. You're, you're really going to be able to help keep yourself on track on a daily basis. That's, that's what these tools are for. And yeah, I know that uh, a good friend of mine and uh, Ryan Lilly talks about how these tools are some of the, the most powerful personal development tools he's ever come across. Um, so just, it's something that I'm very, very proud of and very happy to be getting out to you because uh, I really want to make a difference. So what you're going to be getting, you're going to be getting that new you revolution online program. That's 997 value plus my life triad toolbox, all my different worksheets. That's, you know, almost $200 value. So right here, you're looking at, you know, almost $1,200. So what else do you need? Well, we need some time, right? <laughs> so Dan, are you saying that you can, you can give me more time? Why? Well, yes, I am. Um, there's a, a program I have called the time concentration. It's a, one of my, my latest book. It's the life hack series number one. And really this is a way that you can, without modifying your schedule, actually improve your efficiency, improve the amount of life that you have in the time that you have. Right. And it's about combining experiences and combining different parts of your life, you know, into, into time. You know, the, the example that I, that I always like to use is I changed my, part of my exercise routine to include karate. 
And because one, I like karate. Uh, two, it's there's a mental aspect. It's not just physical training. There's definitely physical training there. Um, for me personally, there's almost a, there's a spiritual aspect to it. Uh, you know, kind of getting in touch with yourself and, and focus. <coughs> Excuse me. But I also I do it with my kids. So you know, my kids and I are going to be starting um, training for our black belt in January. Right. So that's something that we are doing together. We get together time. We have something to talk about. We have something to practice together. It's really helps bring the family together. And I've made friends there. Um, I've even gotten business from the people that I meet there. So it's all of these different parts of life concentrated into one hour a day, you know, one hour, a couple of times a week. So I've concentrated my life. So it's, it's beautiful that I'm able to get more time in more life in that time. All right. So I'm going to be giving you that, uh, that book for free so that you can get in, start applying some of these principles and actually getting more time for you. The next thing that I'm also going to be getting you is the over overcome procrastination guide that I, I've put together some tips and tricks on how to overcome procrastination because which is the, the biggest time killer that we have is, oh, I'll put it off. I'll put it off. Well, no, it's time to stop that right now. So this, this is a fantastic guide for how to, how to get past that. All right. So what you're going to be getting, you're going to be getting the New Year Revolution online program. It's $1,000. The Knife Triad Toolbox, that's $200. Time Concentration and Overcoming Procrastination Guide. You're, you're looking at over $1,200 in value for this program, right? Now, obviously, I'm not going to charge you $1,200, right? But if I did, and all it did was show you exactly how to, to design a sustainably balanced life, would it be worth it? Would that be worth it to you to have that ultimate life? Real, you know, $1,200. How about if it just gave you more time with your family? If, if that was it, if you had just more time with your kids, with your spouse, would that be worth $1,200? If all it did was help you find your purpose and your legacy, your, that guiding destination for your whole life, if it gave you that clarity, is that worth $1,200? I mean, really? I mean, I spent $1,200 on a lot less than, than finding my true purpose in life. Or if all this did was help you achieve one goal that you've been struggling with for years, if it finally helped you write that book, if it finally helped you start that business, if it finally got you over your own self-doubt, would it be worth $1,200? Hmm? So when I was creating this program, I had two, two choices. The first was I could go as cheap as possible, try to sell as many as possible, but really that, that wouldn't, make me want to really stack on the value. The second option was requires a little bit higher investment, but I can, I can devote more resources towards actually helping guarantee your success because that's what I really want is your success. So what's it worth to you? What's it worth to you if, if every time you said, I should, you could turn it into, I did. What would that be worth? Is that worth, you know, uh, an increase in income, you know, 10, 50,000 increase in income, increased physical vitality. You know, I should lose weight. You know what? I did. How much is that worth? How much would you pay to get one step closer? Right? So you can see why it would be a great deal at $1,200, right? And in general, for the, the general public, this is about a $200 program. But because you are special and you are special, Today, you can get started for just $97. You go to newyou.thirdpowerperformance.com, sign up right there, and we will get you, it'll be, get you registered for the events that are, that are coming up. So you have two options at this point, right? You can do nothing, not take this leap of faith. It's 100% risk-free, and you know what? You won't hurt my feelings. You won't. Um, yeah, I want to help those that are willing to help themselves. So you can, you, you can 
do, do nothing. That's that's perfectly okay. Or you can you know put up this small investment, you know, compared to all the value you get, and give it a shot. Right? It, it's it's completely up to you. You can do that. And you know what? I give a, a thirty day guarantee. If you don't like this program for any reason, just let me know. I'll give you your money back. I'll, like I said, I tell people all the time, if I can't deliver value to you, I don't deserve your money. And I firmly believe that. So you don't like it, money back. So what you're going to get at this point, you're going to get the new You Revolution online program that's $997. The Life Triad Toolbox at $200 the time concentration and the overcome procrastination guy, all of that, a $1,261 value. And you get it today for just $97. Okay. So, you know, if there are any questions, please, you know, go ahead and pop those in the box. Um, I appreciate everybody giving me your time because that's, that's the real, that's the real gift for me. <laughs> You know, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to give and, and to you know to help people, but the the real gift to me is you giving me your time. That's what's valuable to me. So I I appreciate you very much. Um, thank you for for listening. You know, go go to newyou.thirdpowerperformance.com. Get yourself signed up. I, I really do want to make a difference in your life. That's that's why I'm here. <laughs>